I think social media has a lot to answer for when it comes to the whole mobile phone camera is not a real camera sort of debate. That's where you see it the most. You see it in all sorts of photography groups and you kind of just expect it. The internet's kind of a cesspool of opinion. But when the thing that really disappoints me gets there is the astrophotography groups on Facebook. There's even budget astrophotography groups. And, and I know some of the guys who watch this channel, they put their photos on there and they tell people how they did it with what phone. And you always get this little gremlin down there saying, this isn't a real bloody camera, you shouldn't be doing it. And to that I kind of say, oh shit. G'day guys, Shane Austin here on this channel. We do all sorts of low light astrophotography, long exposure photography with your mobile phone. So if you're in that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button and see a tutorial. Oh, these days it's probably every week, but if you have subscribed, you're a bloody legend. Today what I want to talk to you about is, well, is astrophotography with a phone, is it really a big deal? I'm going to say, obviously, I think it's a big deal and I'll explain why I think it's a big deal. But what I might do here, I'll grab my mirrorless Sony camera and I'll grab what I think is probably the best camera on a phone that we have for astrophotography. We'll put it up against each other and I'll tell you why I think these things have their place. The galactic core at this time of the year, tonight, it's sitting almost vertical up here. I know it's up that way there, right there, of course, because I've used photo pills to see where it is during the day. I'll put a link up there to show you other planning videos that I use for these types of photos. This is the Sony a7R 3 It's not the newest and newest and best and so forth from Sony, but it's a pretty bloody good camera. And I've used this one for a while for doing this sort of work. It's, uh, well, you'll see what it can do. Uh, so we'll turn this on, put make sure it's in manual mode, it's in manual mode. And so it's a, with the rule of 500, we've got to set the shutter speed for this. So it's a 17 millimeter f2.8 lens on this one here. It's a Tamron lens. So we'll 17, uh, 500 divided by 17 works out to just under 30 seconds. So we'll shoot for the full 30 second. Manual, got, we're gonna to need to manual focus this now. And that's not the easiest thing to do. So we're gonna put that into manual focus, MF. And now we need to, that's it. What happens on this camera here, as soon as you touch the focus ring, it zooms in, it's like a, a focus assist. Now what I need to do is find a nice bright light as in a star. Get that so it's pin sharp, that's good to go. What I'll do now is I'll turn this off, I'll compose this properly between the tree and the telegraph pole and we'll see how we go. I think this is going to be good. The photo's taken now, it's just processing, it's writing it to the card, it'll be done in just a second. Um, this will be good, this will be really good. Hit the play, yeah. It's absolutely epic. Have a look at this. So I'll take this off. We'll put a phone holder on. This is the um, phone holder from Explorer. Uh, I'll put a link down the bottom here. They sent me this one when they sent me the tripod. And they also sent that uh, MagSafe one for the iPhones. But this is actually, it's made of aluminium. It's pretty bloody tonka tough. It's got the mount into the, uh, the base of the phone holder there. So it'll go straight onto the tripod. No need for any other plates and stuff. Anyway, we'll put this on and we'll put a pixel on here. It's on there now, I've put it 90 degrees so it's portrait orientated. We'll get the pixel. This is the pixel, this is the pixel six. I don't use it as a everyday sort of camera, uh, phone. It's um, well, just there for this channel. So we'll get that loaded into the phone holder there. You remember all that setting up that we had to do with the Sony, all the settings, the focusing, everything else. You don't need to do that here. And I think, uh, in, from my thinking, on, I reckon that might be part of the reason that some of the photographers in some of these groups go, you're not a real photographer, it's not a real camera, you don't need to set it up. Um, I'll talk more about that in a second. I'll just lock that in, lock that in. I think that's roughly the same sort of composition, maybe a little bit higher, a little bit higher like that. Just turn it around a little bit. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's going to be pretty close. So we'll use that. We'll go with that. We'll go into the camera. This is what I love about using mobile phones for doing this sort of photo. We're going to go, it's got night mode there. If I turn this off, it's going to give me astro mode. Then we're going to shoot for four minutes and six seconds. Well, I used to run astro photography workshops here uh, in my local hometown for people with, you know, real cameras, you know, the Sonys, the Canons, the Nikon, all that sort of stuff. And they'd come up here and we'd go out and learn how to shoot 
astrophotography with those cameras. And people used to say to me, why on earth are you teaching someone else how to do something that you make money from? I'm like, well, if you want to get up at two o'clock in the bloody morning to go and take photos of the stars, well, kudos to you. Who cares what you're doing it with? And if they're that keen and that dedicated, fill your boots. I'm oh, not going to stop you. It's not my place to stop you. Go and be creative. And you may not get a great photo straight off the bat. You may take you a few times to get it, but that dedication and that creative spirit is what's going to really drive you forward in doing this. And when I see comments on Facebook groups about get out of here, you're not, this group's not for you, this is for astrophotography. Well, photography is taking photos of shit, astro is space, and if you can go and take photos of you know, things that are in space, whether it's the moon, the stars, whatever, and you're taking it with a freaking camera, it's on a phone, guess what, you're an astro freaking photographer. I get that you see this sort of thing in these groups a fair bit, but that's just kind of how those, you know, those social platforms work. It's, if you, they, they thrive on the hate. You like the hate, keep going back to the hate. My, my advice to you is, if you want constructive feedback, go and find a group that's actually quite good for doing what you're doing. Like the phone photography, there's plenty of people out there making a living from it. There's plenty of people out there doing it because they just enjoy it. And there's plenty of people doing the other with, with real cameras who are also enjoying it and other people who are also making money from it. It really doesn't matter. If you, I've seen some ripper photos coming from phones. They do a bloody good job these days. Anyway, that's enough of me ranting. This is finished now. It's been four minutes and uh, it's pretty bloody good. Think about what we did to get to this point though. The Sony took us a fair bit of time to set it up. I'm going to have to go and edit that photo because I've shot it raw. So I'll be bringing that onto, off that device, putting onto my Mac and editing that. And this is, I'll show you the end result of those in just a second. This here, you know, I can shoot it raw, I can shoot it JPEG. And it also gives me a four, a one second, one second, or well, four seconds, can't remember now, but it gives me a short little time lapse of the Milky Way moving through the sky. The camera doesn't do that. It's easy to use. I didn't need to focus it. I didn't need to set ISO. What this thing does for those astrophotographers out there, this thing takes 16 photos at 16 seconds each, brings them in, aligns them all up, and outputs an image for you. It's a pretty freaking good solution. Now, just because we're not sitting here manually focusing shit and doing all that, it's still taking a pretty bloody good photo. If you want to share these sorts of photos, go and join our bloody group. You'll be more than encouraged to keep going. I'm going to edit this photo, edit that photo, and uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. So both of those photos, you've got to put it into perspective. One is one camera there cost me about four grand Australian. That's the camera, the L bracket, the lens, all that sort of gear. Uh, and the phone cost in Australia here, I think it was like 800 bucks or 900 bucks, something like that. And it's literally put on a tripod, put it up at the sky, shoot away. It's got a bin 50 megapixel camera. Um, I think it bins it down to about 12 megapixels. That one there is like 40 something, I think it is. So it's significantly different. My point is, and it's a valid point, it's taking photos with a camera of the stars. It's dead set simple, and people who are intimidated by these groups and the language that they use and the terminology that's out there, this is a perfect way for people to get into that sort of hobby with very little cost, enjoyable images, and it's a great way to start. There are some gun photographers out there just using their mobile phone. Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about that. Sorry to rant and rave a bit. I don't, don't, don't normally do that sort of thing on the channel, but I saw something there the other day on one of these groups and it, oh my God, it pissed me off. So this guy took a ripper photo and someone's getting stuck into him because he's not using a $4,000 camera. Anyway, you want to join a good Facebook group? I've got one over there, list down the bottom there. Uh, link, jump on in, answer the questions, and you'll be more than welcome to show all of your phone photo images that you're taking. Anyway, guys, that's it. I'll catch you later.